Well, um, my name is George. Uh, I come from Ghana. I'm with Kumasi Hive. Yeah, and uh, my name is Harry Atigo. Uh, I'm a technical associate at Kumasi Hive. And uh, yes. Uh, so Kumasi Hive is a tech innovation hub um, to begin with. Um, and what we try to do is to create a platform that targets mostly youth. Um, those that want to um, turn ideas into solutions for their community and then those that have something already and need their support in scaling their impact. So fundamentally this is the broad services of what commercial I've tried to do. And then in doing that, we tend to have various ways of uh, um, accomplishing it. For for us, something like making, um, so we have our maker space and all that, is, is a way that, it's a unique way of, first of all, creating those kind of solutions. And secondly, using the solutions to impact our society. And thirdly, also a way that we create jobs for our people. Because then, people are then able to create value. That value can then be to grown up as a solution that uh, can be run as a business. And then we create jobs because we have that problem of unemployment and that problem of a lot of uh, uh, challenges that we face. Because of the, the situation of, uh, I mean, the youth, uh, where the youth want to, I mean, migrate into the, the capital, which is Accra, we want to move, uh, I mean, we decided to set up Kumasi Hive outside of uh, the capital which is most often choked and uh, most of the time uh, I mean investors or people who want to build businesses want to go to Accra and we feel that is not opening up uh, development across uh, board that is why Kumasi Hive uh, was actually set up in Kumasi and I can tell you for a fact that Kumasi Hive being in Kumasi is changing a lot of things in respect to providing jobs for young people and also bringing development to Kumasi as, as, as a whole. And I believe that in the, in, in the near future, uh, a lot more people are going to see what Kumasi Hive is, is doing and want to, to start growing their own local innovation spaces that will bring development and also bringing youth uh, closer and creating a community for youth to, to grow. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the Africa Open Science Hardware Summit uh, was was a conversation that actually started uh, two years ago uh, when uh, two very great people within the community, uh, George, who is here, and uh, Thomas, who will be hosting the the summit in uh, Cameroon in 2020, uh, met in at the Gathering for Open Science Hardware in Geneva. The they saw that the the the, the, the I mean the use and the adoption of open science is very important on the continent and there is nothing like that happening so they wanted to see how they can create a grassroots movement and the conversations around uh, open science hardware principles therefore they, they went ahead uh, and they met other key players when they went to the bio summit in, in the US and the conversation went up, uh, started over there again or continued over, uh, over there again then uh, in April uh, 2017, uh, I mean, the very first summit was hosted in Kumasi, uh, which was very uh, important for us because it brought together very key people across the globe with a very great uh, African representation. The, con the conversation started over there and on and on it's been going. So for us, it is, I mean, a very uh, inspiring thing to start such a conversation and want to uh, try to remove barriers that are imposed by, uh, I mean, traditional ways of doing things and opening up systems that will promote innovation on the continent. Well, I, I think is is right um, what, what you are saying about where um, the numbers kind of dilute that kind of engagement and then, then, then the, the precise or the quality of um, resulting uh, um, let's say discussions that come out of some such such um, summit and programs. Then one of the ways that we have always seen the summit to be as a way that we can translate knowledge in the open science and hardware uh, field to to practical solutions for Africans. 
So it has, it's one of the key drivers. We are not just meeting to talk, but we are meeting to find practical ways where this thing can really um, trickle down to, 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 to change the life of the ordinary African that are struggling with water access, energy access, struggling with basic, basic things that they face in life, um, with health issues and all that. So that has always been one, you know, one of the number one, um, let's say the number one objective, I should put it that way. And then secondly, to, to, to make sure that we save, guard ourselves against this, especially when we grow um, our, our community, is what we are starting this year, um, um, which is going to be in Cameroon, and that's the, um, the African uh, Institute of Open Science and Hardware. And that gives us a platform for African research, researchers, and then working with also international researchers, people that um, come from other parts of the world, to collaborate, to, to, to get researchers come all over to Africa to work on practical open science and hardware uh, works that, that can have their, their direct impact into, into their community. So the communities, we are going to increase those aspects of it. Um, days before the summit, we will, we will we are looking at bringing a lot of other African research and practitioners, and practitioners to collaborate with people that already do amazing stuff in other places, to have a um, transfer of knowledge and skills happen at the institute and that could then be shared so when we are talking about uh, the things that we talk about in the summit are like practical and and the things that are already out there to to make an impact so these are some of the ways that we try to um prevent the dilution of of the community um still maintaining that we also need to reach out to a lot of africans uh, especially those that are from the francophone and those uh, from the uh, Portuguese side, and all that. Africa is very diverse, and we really want to reach out. So, but we still also have to make sure the quality of engagement is, is, is not diluted. All right, so, um, the first one was in Ghana. Uh, the second one was in Tanzania, yeah. um, which has a, a very a histor a historical connection. Um, Ghana being the first uh, um, sub saharan Africa country to have independence and then um, um, Tanzania um, will follow suit in those direction. Um, so the connection of, of pushing the African agenda is, is connected through that. Um, the next one is going to be in Cameroon. And it's very, very important as a community. We've got to talk about the country, the diversity. Africa is very diverse. And that gives us the opportunity to get the francophone community to integrate because most of the times to certain things like innovation, science and all that, the francophone, especially in Africa, are kind of systematically excluded due to a number of factors, the language and all that. So we are finding a way that if we really want to make that last scale grassroots impact, then we need to have an inclusive approach in doing that. And this gives us the, 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 the great opportunity to achieving some of that. I would say the first part is the bilingual anyway. Um, Cameroon is very, very unique because it's one of the first. It's, it's actually one, one of the only countries in, in Africa where you find bilingual, yeah. um, French and, and, and that. And also, um, uh, I would say the, the, the community that is being built by Mbua Lab um, is, is also tremendous. In a very low resource manner, the reach is is amazing, and and it is easy. Also, one important thing is the West African Central Community, because of the position of of Cameroon, position of uh, Yaounde, brings about that community together, Central Africa, and still have a stronger West Africa community also partaking. So for me, this this kind of position Yaounde in a very great light, um, and. and potentially being the springboard to other African um, um, francophone countries and I think there's no better place to start yeah. such an engagement yeah. um, of, of the francophone mm -hmm. than, than in Cameroon and precisely Yaoundé. Yeah. yeah, so what what I would say to this is, is, is that UNESCO is, is a very strong uh, voice uh, with regards to uh, science on, on I mean globally and they have been doing a number of things trying to push uh, for the inclusion of African women scientists therefore I mean the sponsorship package uh, having UNESCO as a brand sponsorship is key to 
uh, giving that weight to the community in raising, I mean, the needed support from the external community, I mean, globally. Uh, and also because of the fact that we are trying as much as possible to cre create an inclusion platform for African women. Uh, and that was why this year, uh, when we hosted Africa Open Science Hardware Summit in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, we had a special section on African women in open science hardware. So just having um, them as a branch support it's, it's very important to us uh, beyond them the giving money. us money. Uh, so that is one thing that I want to, 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 to state on record, that their presence uh, to the, the, the community is, is very worth it because they have that rich pool of resources in terms of uh, visionary support because they have been doing great things uh, in the field of science and greatly supporting the open science movement uh, globally and on the continent. So mm -hmm. that is very important to us. I think um, um, the, the, the science is the broader, is the broader subject over here, all right? The, the hardware um, basically is the, um, one of the modes um, in which the science manifests. And, and in this case, um, you, you'll be talking about the, like the physicals or the, the practicality of the science. Um, especially a lot of people refer to instrumentation, tools, equipment, and all that. So that is an aspect of that. Um, in our context, too, when we say that we, will, we still maintain um, the, the differences that also co established, that there's the broader science and then there's also the hardware part. It does not exclude the broader science um, that look at all the other forms, um, but that you know that um, there's the component of it that is very, very critical to us as Africans. That's the hardware, too. So, one, one example is the uh, Open Enzyme project, which is, is, is a typical example of uh, an open science hardware project. So, one thing I want to say is, is this. When in our case, when we are talking about uh, open science hardware, you know that you cannot do science without hardware and you cannot do science without uh, reagents. So, and you cannot also do science without uh, information, li uh, scientific literature. So for us, when we are talking about open science hardware, those are the, the things we are talking about. That is why when we are having conversations, uh, I mean, at our summits, we mention and we have conversations around all this broad spectrum of uh, what science is. So if you say, and I should mention a project uh, for which is rightly visible in our community, I mean, there are many more of such. Uh, I want to add one, if you give me the permission. So we have the Open Enzyme project and then the Africa Archive, which is a very visible project that came out of uh, uh, the Africa Open Science Hardware. Yeah, and actually, I was expecting you to talk about the, um, the malaria testing kits. Yeah, uh, I know that because that that are also translated hardware that you need. Um, in in a broader context to what people might be fami familiar with, um, if you look at an open science hardware, uh, you can easily classify um something like the Arduino as part of it. Um, because that give us that skill that we need. Um, there's a lot of um testing tools like rebuilding chambers yeah. to perform uh um science yeah, biological safety cabinets yes. uh, for all being... those kind of things right yeah. these are things that if the knowledge is closed we can't build that we can't we can't buy the equipment and we can't afford that the centrifuges and all that yeah. we can't afford that so we need we need a way of being able to replicate we talk about a microscope project we can't afford a, uh, a twenty thousand microscope yeah. How many labs in Africa can afford? Mm -hmm. How many scientists in Africa can afford this in their labs? It's not possible. But then if you have um, people that have this knowledge, making it open, that we can replicate with our simple fabrication tools like 3D printers, laser cutters, then we can able to replicate this instrument in a way that we can also use to perform science to make meaningful impact yeah. in our lives of our people. So these are just some few of that. Yeah. Okay. Open science... In our context, most of the times, so there's like the invisible end. So open science and hardware. So we're trying to put the science on top 
and then they hardware down. So there are, there are different quantities. That I said, like the science itself is still maintained as the as a broader subject. The hardware also is maintained as, a, as, a, as another subject. Um, in putting up in a conversation, we just said uh, open okay. science and hardware. So in our context, we are not just looking at the exclusiveness of of open science hardware as just the tools or the 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 the, the, the mode of manifestation of that science, but we are looking at the science. And then the hardware, we, we recognize that too. Well, um, Jules says this um, is a mobile technology um, in, in which um, it helps, less, especially very effective on future phones. Um, it is it's quite interactive. Basically, you have numbers and code, and you just put them in, and it gives you a feedback with an information. Um, it, this is a tool that is has has a high penetration in Africa. So we talk about the mobile money uh, uh, revolution in Africa. Um, how is is disrupting the banking system, helping us leapfrog the bank banking infrastructure that is built on the USSD. And the contents of, of what can it be used in other things like migration is access, uh, penetration and access almost. Everybody, almost every African has a phone. Huge part of the population. So if we are talking about an effective tool of how to reach them, then USSD comes in. We talk about migration. How do you get information, which is the biggest problem of migration, lack of information, then we're talking about USSD. Yeah.